Okay, so hopefully you all watched that video I sent you. Um, sorry to leave you hanging on Friday, but um, I th it was becoming very clear to me that it was going to be a bad idea <laughs> for me to try to teach a class Friday morning. So sorry about that. Uh, any questions about that video? Yes. It's a, it's it's not a unit. It's, no, it's it's just a number. It's just a magic number, and you use that magic number to find the dB difference of something, right? No, just the parts that you know were covered in the in the video. Yeah, because we're talking about that part today. Um, other questions? OK, so I'm just going to breeze through these slides real quick that were in the video. So we know that there's this thing called the decibel, right? And we use that as a decibel is just a shorthand, OK? Because the range is, when we start talking about amplitude, the numbers involved in that range are just too big to use, you know, to be practical to use. I mean, you, you weren't, we don't want to be doing math on numbers with enough zeros that they can be counted in trillions. It's just not practical. So uh, we use decibels to kind of collapse that t one trillion value range down to, you know, like 120 value range, okay? Much easier to work with. But what that means is that decibels aren't, uh, don't progress linearly. And what I mean by that is, you know, going up three decibels does not, you could go three decibels right now and then another three decibels later, and that doesn't necessarily mean you increased the actual power by the same amount, right? That, that, that next three decibels will be a, a much larger difference, okay, than you did before, okay? Uh, in actual power levels. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. Uh, and that's what this chart sort of shows, is that you know we hopped by 10 dB, and we were multiplying by 10, the actual value in watts. We go up 3 dB, and that same 10,000 di difference that got us 10 dB before now only gets us 3 dB. Right? So it's a logarithmic spectrum. It, gets, it's, it is not linear. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's only a logarithmic. Yeah, because this is, you know, when we're talking about the actual watts over here, I mean, you know, 100 watts is 100 watts is 100 watts, and 1,000 watts is 1,000 watts, and 10,000 watts is 10,000 watts. It's not, you know, that's actual power levels. Decibels is just, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an approximation of that. It sort of collapses those ranges down into smaller values. But it just means that, you can't think about decibels as though they are an actual value because they aren't. <laughs> they are, they're just a relative value, right? It was just I changed it by a relative amount, okay? Uh, whereas the 1,000 watts, that's an actual thing, right? That is a unit of measurement that has a standard and is agreed upon. But 3 dB could mean a lot of things could mean a lot of different potential values. Okay, it's, it, it, all that means is I made it 3 dB different than what it was before. Okay, so uh, once you start talking in dB, it's, it's a relative unit, not absolute. Okay, and as we, as we discussed in the video that when you're talking about power decibels, we kind of remember that shorthand for that 3 and 10 rule. You double a power, it goes up 3 dB. You multiply a power by 10, it goes up 10 dB. Okay, and, by, and, if, and it works the other way as well. You divide by 2, and you get a 3 dB decrease. Divide by 10, you get a 10 dB de decrease. Um, this was just that sort of shortcut to kind of show you 
uh, watts 1 through 10 and, and dB 1 through 10. And we did a little bit of math on just how do you do some of those calculations. We filled in the chart. We'll do that again today with the force decibels. Uh, we did a few options here of some math. Um, and this is probably the question that I want you to remember the most. Um, that diff that what, do you remember what the answer to this question was? So if we did, it's 10 times the log of uh, 350 divided by 800. Which I got 3.59 decibels. Uh, it just depends on which number you put on top. <laughs> okay. Right? You'll either get a positive or a negative number. So if you put the smaller number on top, you'll get a negative number. If you put the bigger number on top, you get a positive number. Okay. They're both essentially the same. Um, the key word was I'm asking how much are you going to sacrifice by buying right. the cheaper right. amplifier. So I'm looking for what am I going to lose, and therefore, I, you know, in, a, in a perfect world, you'd get a negative number. But yes, it's the same. Okay, uh, and those of you that have been kind of paying attention on, on sound gym to those dB drills, three and a half dB is not a massive difference in level. Uh, I mean, you actually have to kind of pay attention to hear that. So that, this is what I'm talking about when I say that decibels is a relative value. It's, it's not an actual thing. It it's, we're talking about collapsing huge ranges into small numbers. Absolutely. Like, hey, you need to take much watch. They exploit it all the time. That's why, that's why that's, they don't talk about, when they talk, start talking about amplifiers and particular home sound systems, they talk about watts. Because they can say, oh, it's a, a 5,000 watt system. And that sounds really impressive. But 5,000 watts in what context? 5,000 watts compared to what and into what? And how is that different from the other one that is only... 3,000 watts, and the answer is not much, right? Yeah. How would the headroom like, compare between like 350 watts and 5,000? I mean, there is no headroom in this scenario. Oh, okay. We're talking about, you know, we're, we're saying that 800 watts is the most the amp will put out, or 350 watts is the most the amp will put out. I mean, it's the same instrument, same I mean, headroom is a different concept that we're going to talk about a little bit later, but it's not really, that's not really part of this. All we're just talking about is how many watts actually can come out of the thing. Okay. Now, how much sound that turns into involves some variables we haven't learned yet. Um, so that's just an important thing to remember is, you know, don't get too distracted by these big numbers because these big numbers are not particularly meaningful. And you know, that 800 watt amplifier might cost you twice as much money as that 350 watt amplifier, but it is not going to give you twice as much sound. Right? Not even close will it give you twice as much, at least perceived sound. Even if it's twice as many watts, it doesn't necessarily mean that's twice as much sound that you will hear and perceive. Okay? So that's just the absolutely critical take home message from that power decibel discussion. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, we talked about power ratios, which is this is like if you know the dB difference and you want to convert that back down uh, to some actual power level, you can use this, uh, which will help. Um, okay, um, here we go. So now let's talk about force decibels. So here's the thing. Uh, when we're talking about power decibels, the only real situation these days where we start talking about power decibels is when you're talking about what's going on between the power amplifier and the loudspeaker. Because the only time that watts really becomes important to us. The only other time that watts kind of becomes interesting to us is when we start talking about transmit power levels of 
like wireless mics. But even then, it's not super critical. The rest of the time, our signals, we're measuring them in some unit of force. Okay? And when you start looking at your sound as a force, the rules change just slightly. Okay? And hopefully you'll see why. Uh, so when any, any value, whether it's sound or audio or whatever, uh, that when you look at it as a force follows what I would call the 6 and 20 rule. In this case, if you multiply a force by 2, you get a 6 dB increase this time instead of only 3 when, you, when you're working with power. And if you multiply a force by 10, you get a 20 dB increase this time as opposed to only a 10 dB increase with power. So a pretty big, pretty big difference here. And so going back to that slide before where I was saying, hey, that difference between those two amplifiers, the bit that I want you to remember is by the time you get to the amplifier, most of your gain work has been done. Okay, The amount of difference you're going to be able to make after it hits the amplifier you know, is not much. Okay, The amplifier is going to do what it does, and you could buy a whole second amplifier, and it's not going to make that big of a difference. So by the time you get to that signal that's coming between the power amplifier and the loudspeaker, your ability to manipulate it in any really significant way is over. Okay, So it's much more efficient if you can deal with the signal earlier in the chain when it's still a force. Because you could double that signal when it's, when it's a force and you'll get a 6 dB difference as opposed to only a 3 dB. Okay, So that's super helpful. And that's why I said that you know, it's really only between the power amp and the loudspeaker that we start looking at it in terms of power. That wasn't always the case. In the early days of audio, we used to think about power much more often because without, I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but essentially the input impedances of all of the different devices on our chains, that was a moving target. And so the, you know, the, the rock that, this, that our signal was trying to, to push was changing, right? The, 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 it was, you never quite knew how hard your signal was going to have to work to get through the next box in the system. And now that's been standardized, and so we don't have to worry about it anymore. All we have to worry about is the force, the voltage or the current or whatever. Yeah? No, I'm talking about earlier in the chain. So that it, right now, loudspeakers is really the only scenario where we talk about impedance. But impedance is a variable every, every, any time you plug an audio cable into anything. That input has an impedance. right? It is going to resist that energy to some extent. When you plug a mic into a mixing console, there is an impedance involved there, whether you realize it or not. And it used to be that we had to think about the impedance of that. But you know, a few, twenty, two or three decades ago, we standardized that input, input impedance for line level devices so that we don't have to play that game anymore. Which means now we can just talk about the potential energy because we know what the resistance is going to be. That's standard. And therefore, we can just talk about the voltage or the current or whatever force is involved here to push against that thing. Uh, and that allows us to get a lot more bang for our buck. Yeah. Yeah, you get a bit. Yeah, you get twice the you get twice the bang for your buck. Okay, um, but remember, decibels is a relative value and it is a nonlinear value. Okay, so d you don't think about it as in terms of doubling because the actual values are much larger numbers than we're working with when we talk about the actual decibels. Okay, so it's. I mean, in, in this chart, it doesn't look that way. But remember, the actual di audible difference could be the difference between 1 and 1 trillion. So that doubling of, you know, that, that you get twice as many dB for the same type of difference, that difference still could be a really l enormous number in actual force, or it could be a very small number in actual force. It just depends on the scenario. Yeah.
are those saying two different things, or are they saying the same thing but two different things? Well, that number of voltage, that, that a value in voltage, could be one watt if the loudspeaker has a certain impedance. Or it could be something other than a one watt if the loudspeaker has a different impedance. So, <laughs> are, are volts different? Like, I, so like, I'm just trying to think of how are, like, you know, talking example of the, the volts of the loudspeaker is talking about like right. height and all. So where does watt play into that? Or how does watt play into that? Well, watts is work, OK? So <clears throat> I'll, let me see if I can demonstrate this. So imagine that we've got an enormous rock that we have to push somewhere, OK? And we're going to use a human being to push that rock, OK? So here's my human being. He's going to push this rock, OK? Well, this rock has a certain mass, right? It is heavy. And therefore, it will represent a certain impedance to the person trying to push it. It will impede the efforts of this person pushing it. So you know, we could talk about that in ohms, right? So that rock is going to resist being pushed. It, it's not going to want to be pushed because it wants to stay where it is because it's really heavy. Okay. This person, depending on you know whether they ate their Wheaties for breakfast or like me, had a donut for breakfast or something, you know, they're going to have a certain amount of potential energy in their body at their disposal, right, to, to, do this, to potentially do this work. So that is potential energy. That's like, that's volts. Okay, so volts is, you know, the amount of potential energy that exists inside of this human being, right? So I don't know why that went red, but... Uh, <clears throat> So this person has X number of volts of sugar in their, <laughs> or glycogen in their muscles that is going to allow them to, do, to push on this rock, OK? So what remains to be seen is uh, how, what, depending on how much energy is potentially in this human being, when they try to push on this rock, how far is the rock going to be able to move with that amount of energy, right? That's watts. <laughs> watts is how far can the rock move? That's watts. Okay, so if it's if it's one, you could say one foot per watt or something like that. You know, so that that that's what it is. So and, and it depends, right? If if the rock is only only weighs one pound, and you know. Just even an average human being's pushing on it, they're going to be able to push that rock real far. Okay, that'd be a lot of watts, right? But if this rock weighs 1,000 pounds, and any of us in this room try to push that rock, it's probably not going to go very far. Not very many watts are going to be delivered in that scenario, right? Volts is the same, right? You'd have the same amount of energy in your system. It's just what can that energy do against that rock? Okay, that's watts. So uh, you got to th you think about the loudspeaker as the rock. Okay, and that's what a loudspeaker is: is a big, heavy hunk of metal suspended in a magnet. And you're going to use some electricity to try to push it. And how far is it going to be able to push it? That's that's what turns it into amplitude, right? The further it can push that driver out, the higher amplitude the signal will be that comes out of it, the louder the sound will be. So how far can it push it? That's watts. The volt stays the same. So if it's eight, watt, if it's eight ohms in the loudspeaker, you're not going to get as much sound out of it as you would if it was only four ohms, given the same amount of voltage coming out of that amplifier. Yeah, amps is how, how much energy is flowing through their arms at any given point in time, right? So that's amps. 
amps is how much energy are they putting through their arms at any given time. Uh, and there, there's a limit to that, right? <clears throat> they can have tons of energy in your body, but you can't put all of it into your, the muscles in your arms all at the same time. If you, if you try to do that, what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, your, your arms will blow up, you know? It'll just <laughs> you can't do that. They'll break, okay? Uh, or, and that's what ha that happens all the time, right? There's, that's why there are breakers in electrical systems, because you put too many amps of current through that wire, and it'll just flame out. So they put little breakers in to stop that from happening. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, in the, so in the context of loudspeakers, that's what we're talking about is, yes, ultimately there is voltage coming out of that power amplifier, okay, the, in, in potential energy. But what you're going to be able to do with that voltage depends on what you got have it pushing against. So in the context of a loudspeaker, if they're saying, if they're specking their sensitivity based on a, a value of voltage, they're saying, they're just choosing to do it that way because they know that they have X number of impedance. They know the impedance of the thing and they're just saying, hey, you put this many volts up against this thing, it's going to be able to push it that far. You could do the math and turn that into watts and it probably is, it probably is one watt in that scenario <laughs> given that particular impedance. But that 2.83 volts against 4 ohms is a, t is a different value of watts than against 8 ohms. Get it? Yeah, it will be more volts to, to generate the same amount of sound, right? Do the same amount of work, right? So, yeah. Uh, oops. So here's what I want to do. Um, let's just do a couple of uh, little bits of math here. So dB difference between 2 volts and 10 volts. Well, just using our little chart here, uh, 2 volts is 6 dB, according to our chart, and 10 volts is 20 dB. That's a difference of 14 dB, right? So 14 dB difference between 2 volts and 10 volts. I haven't got to the hard stuff yet. We're just we're starting out slow. OK. Um, difference. DB difference between 1 volt and 100 volts. Okay, well, that's not on the chart, but here's the thing. 1 volt and 10 volts is 20 dB. And therefore, the difference between 10 volts and 100 volts would also be 20 dB. So it's a total of 40 dB difference between 1 volt and 100 volts. Okay? It's nonlinear. It's logarithmic. Okay, uh, here's another one. Okay, let's build our own chart. Hopefully, you saw us try to do this on the video. Um, we're going to try to do it again this time using only the six and twenty rule. Okay, so <clears throat> we start with one volt equals zero dB. Fill in the rest of the chart, doing math only in your head using the 6 and 20 rule. How do I figure out how many volts are all these other dB levels? So if I, if I take 1 and multiply it by 2, what happens? 6 dB, right? So yeah, I could put my 2, two volts here next to the 6. Good. I could double that again. It would be 4 volts, and that would be 12 dB, right? Good. Yep, so I could take that 4 and multiply it by 2, and that would be another 6 dB. And now I'm at 8 volts for 18 dB. Okay, those are the easy ones. Yep, so we could take that 1, multiply it by 10, and we get to 20 dB. So 10 volts would be 20 dB. <clears throat> yeah, so now we can work backwards. So we take that 10, divide it by 2, we get 5. <clears throat> that would be 14, exactly. 6 dB down from 10, from 20. Okay, now what? Same thing. What's 5 divided by 2? 2.5. and that, that would be the 8, right? <clears throat> yep, so that would be 1.25, right? And that would be here, 6 dB down from the 8. Okay, now I've still got 3 more i got to figure out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
I don't see an 18 volts. Okay, so if I take this, I'd be 16 volts, and that would equal a 6 dB increase off of 8. Huh? So 24 dB. Okay, what, what can I do with that? Do you want me to divide it by 2? Okay, so that would be 80. Uh, no. So if I, multi if I double a voltage, I go up 20 dB. So I'd be at 38 dB, right? That'd be 32 dB. Twenty six DB. We still haven't got to our chart yet, but we're on, we're on our way. Yep. So we take that out that into half again, we get to ten, and we're back down to twenty DB. Okay. Nice try. Nice try. You're on the right track, but <laughs> Where's We already did that. We already did 40. Okay, well, let's hang on. 1.25 times 2 is. You want to times it by 2 or you want to times it by 10? Because if you times that by 2, I get back to 2.5, which I already have. Yes, good. So if I do, if I do 1.25 times 10, I get. 12.5 volts, and that would be a 20 dB increase over 2, right? So now I'm at 22 dB, correct? Okay, now can I do anything? Yeah, so now take 12.5, divide by 2, and I get 6.25 volts, and that would be 6 dB down from 22, which would be... Da, 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 16. Now we're getting somewhere. So now we can divide this by 2. We get 3 points, what? 1, 2, 5. And divide that by 2 again, and we'd get 1.56 or something, right? We did it. OK, so let's check our math. So 1.25, I think this was 1.6, but the same thing as 1.56. Um, this one was 3.15, we said 
Um, still right, though. This one was 6.3, and we said 6.25. Here, so here's the important thing to remember. Both answers are right. <laughs> Both answers are right. This is the whole point of decibels, is in decibels, we are cramming huge ranges into smaller ranges, which means you will have more than one actual voltage value that will equal the same decibel level. <laughs> that is how it works. That is literally the point of decibels. Yeah, but what I, Yeah, but what I'm saying is the whole point of decibels is so that we don't have to get into point whatever. Because point whatever is something we can't hear. How easy is it for you to hear a 0.5 decibel difference on sound gym? Impossible. <laughs> You're guessing. <laughs> you can't hear it. It's just because the, you know, the, the, the process of, of trying to hear it improves your critical listening, okay. right? You will never be able to actually hear it. But trying to hear it, like trying to really like fine tune that instrument, you will never, you'll never hear that 0.5, but you'll start hearing other stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> So that's, that's the important principle about decibels, is that there is more than one. When you, when you compare the decibel value to the actual value, there is more than one actual value that will equal that decibel, OK? And that's OK. That is the point. That is the point of decibels. It's so we don't have to worry about the fact that yours, you said 0.5, and you said 0.3, and you said 0.8. You know, you're all right. <laughs> Everybody's right. Okay, close counts when you're dealing with decibels. Okay, that's the entire point of, of why we use decibels to begin with. Okay. All right. So uh, we did that. So here is the relative formulas for working with forces. So when we say forces, it's not just voltage we're talking about. Current is also a force. Pressure is a force, and we run into these kinds of things, voltage, current, and pressure, in various stages of our sound system, okay? But they all fall into that category of a force, and therefore they follow the 6 and 20 rule. So uh, the variables, I'm, I, I have had people assure me that these are the correct variables, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's the same formula. It's just about you want to know that the decibel value, you're doing 20 times the log of one force value divided by the other force value, right? So instead of 10 times the log, you're doing 20 times the log, and then you'll get for the force decibels. Likewise, if you want to do that backwards and get the force ratio, it's 10 to the power of the decibel difference divided by 20 instead of divided by 10, okay? And if you do that, you'll get that force decibel difference, okay? So don't, I mean, I don't want you to worry too much. I'm just using these variables as examples. I'm not, I'm never going to quiz you on, OK, is it E or I for the variable here? It doesn't matter, OK? Because you're never going to put E or I. You're just going to put a number in there. As long as it's the right number, then you'll be OK. All right, so let's try some of these. What is the dB difference between 2 volts and 63 volts? Well, let me show you how I do this on my calculator. So this would be, um, this would be 20 times the log of 63 divided by 2, right? So. So what I do is I will do the 63 divided by 2. I'll do that first. And that's 31.5. OK. 
And I'll put that into my memory. And well, actually, or I don't even have to. I could just use that number. And I'll do a base 10 logarithm of that number, which is 1.4983105538. And then I multiply that by 20. And I get 29.96, otherwise known as 30 dB. So you could do 29.96 dB, or you could do 30 dB, and either way, you would be right. So I do 63 divided by 2, and then I, I get 31.5, and then I did base 10 logarithm of that number, and then I multiplied the result by 20. So 20 times the log of 63 divided by 2. Because that's the two values that are the differences I'm looking for. I want to know the dB difference between 63 and 2 volts. Now, you could do 2 divided by 63 if you wanted to. Like, you could flip it. And if you did that, you just get a negative number as opposed to a positive number. But either way, it's the same, right? Negative 30 dB is the same as a difference of 30 dB. I mean, because it's a relative value. The negative just implies. 30 dB less as opposed to 30 dB more. And in some situations, that distinction will be important. When we get into some more complex problems, the difference between 30 dB more and 30 dB less will, will be significant. In the context of this scenario, not particularly significant. OK. So let's try another one. Uh, what's the dB difference between a 9-volt battery and a AA battery? So this is a silly question, but I just want the, the reason for this question is, is I just want you to understand that this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with sound. Okay, Decibels is just a relative value. It just tells you the relative difference between two things. You know, you could, be, you could do the relative difference between the cockroaches in the wall and the cockroaches in the ceiling. <laughs> and you could have a dB difference, right? It doesn't matter. It's, not a, you know, it's just a relative value. So this is just kind of a gee whiz kind of question. OK, so we know a 9-volt battery has 9 volts. How many volts does a AA battery have? 1.5. 1.5 volts, right? OK, so what would be the dB difference between that? It would be 20 times the log of 9 divided by 1.5. That's what I got, 15.56 dB. Anybody else get that? Yeah, but you know the the point here is that it's dB is not necessarily sound, right? The a fifteen you can hear a fifteen dB difference. That's a pretty significant difference. Yes. Yeah, but the difference is the same. A 15 and a half dB difference is a pretty significant difference. I mean, that's going to be like, whoa, I just got a lot of sound, yeah. right, compared to what I had before. And that's the important thing to remember. Decibels are not actual values. They are relative values. When you, when you see 15, D, 15 and a half dB, your next question should be 15 and a half dB more than what, <laughs> right? Because that's what it means. 15 and a half dB does not, that alone does not mean any absolute value. So, I mean, besides the battery, is that not mean like that entire thing doesn't make sense? Yeah, I'll, you know, what this means is that a 9 volt battery is 15 and a half dB more than a AA battery. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean that a 9 volt battery equals 15 and a half dB. Right? right? These aren't absolute values here. They're relative values. 
OK, here's another one. You're going to have to sort of take a little bit of this on faith for a moment, because I haven't told you some of this. But just believe me when I tell you that that little u means something. And I will explain what it means later. But for now, it means something. But the good news is, both of them have it, and therefore, they don't matter in this context. OK? <laughs> so you can forget about that. But I'm telling you that professional, there's this thing called professional line level. And that is a professional standard. And it happens to be plus 4 dBU. OK? Uh, and then there's this other thing called 0 dBU, and that equals 0.775 volts. That's just a standard, OK? So given that information, how many volts is professional line level? Well, what I need to know there's, is there's a 4 dB difference between these two things, right? So I would like to know the force ratio of plus 4 dB. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it? If I could know the force ratio of plus 4 dB, then I might be able to do something. So if I did 10 to the power of 4 divided by 20, what would that be? Yeah, that's what I got. 1.58. Now, that is not my answer, however. 1.58 is just a magic number. OK, so one, it, that is, I, I could take any voltage value, multiply it, or, and do, well, yeah, multiply it by 1.58, and I will get a voltage value that is 4 dB more than that, right? So any voltage that I multiply by 1.58 will become a voltage that is 4 dB more. OK? So if I say 1.58 times 0.775, I should get a voltage that is 4 dB more than 0.775. I got 1.23. Does that know what you guys got? You should just memorize that. Professional line level is 1.23 volts. That's something you're going to want to know someday. So is, um, yeah, 1.58 is almost just like, isn't it? Yeah, 1.58 <laughs> 1 is always the force ratio oh. of 4 dB. Oh. Always. You can take any force value, multiply it by 1.58, and you will get a force value that is 4 dB more. It's a magic number. Okay, But you don't have to memorize that, because you know how to derive it mathematically. No, 1.58 is the force ratio of 4 dB. 1.23 volts is professional line level. Otherwise known as 1.23 volts equals plus 4 dBU. Right? Those are the same thing. Okay? And we'll I'll explain more about what the U means in a minute. How about the car battery? You mean how many DB? I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, you're talking about in current or voltage? <laughs> in voltage, not much. Like, it's, you know, it's a 12 volt battery compared to a 9 volt battery is. You know, not not even 6 dB, right? So, but in current, probably a lot more. Okay, so uh, there's another way that we look at sound as a force, uh, and that is when it hits the air. So, so far we've been talking about sound in its audio form when it is elect in electricity, but now let's talk about what happens when it's air. So when we have air molecules bouncing off of each other. Turns out that's a force too, because that's about pressure, and pressure is pascals. That's the unit of measurement for pressure. And pressure is a force. Okay? And therefore, when the sound starts hitting the air, 
it follows that 6 and 20 rule. And this is called the inverse square law. And the point of the inverse square law is, OK, you've got a certain amount of energy here at the center of this sphere. And it is pushing on the air all around it. Okay? And if you measure the pressure at any single point in space at a given distance away, let's say one meter away, you will, act, you will measure a certain amount of pressure. Okay? But if you go farther away, now that same amount of energy is having to push on a much larger area total surface area, right? And so if you measure at any, any you know, specific point at that further distance, the pressure is going to be less, right? Because the potential energy is spread out over a wider area, OK? What that means in the context of sound is essentially the farther away you get from the thing pushing on the air, the quieter it will sound to you. Because the farther away you get, the more widely dispersed that energy is, and therefore, in any given single point in space, it's making less of a difference. The amplitude is, is, is less. And that follows the 6 and 20 rule. So if you double your distance away from the thing making sound, it will sound 6 dB quieter to you. If you multiply the distance you are away from something by 10, it will sound 20 dB quieter to you. OK? Uh, now, this is, so this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you get paid, because this is hard. So if, you, if you're going to get hired to make sure that the sound that's coming off the stage arrives at the back row of the theater, which could be 300 feet away, you're trying to make sure that it gets to the back row of the theater still audible. But you are fighting against a law of physics. An inverse square law. And, and that law says, the farther you get away, the quieter it will get. And you are being hired to make that not happen. So you are being hired to defy a law of physics. OK? So I just keep that in mind, that the deck is stacked against you. Like, physics is fighting against you in the job you're being asked to do. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. In that context, that was what we decided was no man's land. Yeah. No, it's because you know, you know where you want, you know where the audience is, right? They're not moving. And what you want to know is the difference between that, between what the front of the audience hears and the back of the audience hears. How big of a dB difference is that? Yeah. Right? And you and that changes depending on how far away the source was to begin with. If the source was only a foot away from the front row, then that back row could be, you could have multiplied that distance by 20 by the time you get to the back row, and now you are 40 dB quieter. Whereas if the front row was already 10 feet away from the loudspeaker, it's already gotten a certain amount quieter, and now that back row might, that, that, that still might be a pretty good distance, but that might, they might be 20 feet away. Right? If there's 10 feet between the front row and back row, the front fill is already 10 feet away from the front row, then that difference between front row and back row is now only 6 dB as opposed to 40 dB. Okay? So understanding this inverse square law is super critical to you succeeding at your job. Because if you ignore it, it will destroy you. Because <laughs> it is a law of physics. It does not change. You cannot stop this from happening. Okay? But if you understand how it works, you can, instead of fight it, you can use it to your advantage. Okay? So it uh, turns out the math for this is just the same as any other voltage or any other force rate uh, value. 20 times the log of one distance divided by the other distance will tell you how much sound you're going to lose. Yeah?
Even is a different scenario. We're not talking about even yet. Well, the problem, the reason you're brought into the room is that inverse square law is happening, right? You've got people up on stage that are making plenty of sound, and it's just dying away by the time it gets to the back row. People can't hear it. So you've got to figure out how to overcome that. How do you, so the first thing that I try to do is, how loud is it to begin with on the stage? Can I make it be that loud by, by the time it gets to the back row? Can I overcome that? loss because of inverse square law. So, so if I know that, I've that I'm losing 30 dB between the sound on the stage and the sound of the back row, I have to figure out how do I make the back row hear 30 dB more sound. And then I've at least overcome the initial acoustics problem. We're not, you're thinking way too far ahead right now. We don't know about directivity yet. Okay. For the purposes of our discussion right now, sound travels equally in all directions, which is true, by the way. That is true. Um, it's only us human beings that screw that up, OK, with the little devices and tools that we create. We create tools that, that don't do that. But natural sound travels equally in all directions, OK? so. Uh, Let's take a look at what this means. So, you know, the tools available to us are things like loudspeakers, okay? So we've got one, and we've, whatever we've done to it, it is generating something that we will call a 100 dB. So we measure, put a microphone in front of it, three feet away from it, and we measure a certain, certain sound output, right? A certain pressure level, and we call that level 100 dB just arbitrarily because we can, okay? You can call it anything you want, but for purposes of this discussion, we're gonna call it 100 dB. And, but my audience is 30 feet away, okay? My measurement mic is three feet away, but my audience is, is 30 feet away. And if I'm getting some arbitrary 100 dB at three feet, how many dB of that 100 will be left by the time I get to the seats, which is 30 feet away? So, well, the good news is we can kind of do this in our head, can't we? Because 30 feet is 10 times 3. So we know we're going to lose 20 dB. Because every time you divide by 10 or multiply by 10, you get a 20 dB difference. So it's really just 100 dB to minus 20 dB. It's going to be 80 dB. So I will have 80 dB left of my arbitrarily assigned 100 by the time I get to the front row. I've lost 20 dB. So that's kind of a bummer. Because I'm going to work really hard to put a really great loudspeaker up there to make a whole lot of sound, and I'm going to lose 20 dB of it just getting to the audience. Right? And it's expensive. To make 20 dB more sound is expensive. Imagine trying to get that by just getting a bigger power amplifier. Trying to get 20 dB by getting a bigger amp power amplifier. Because it's the inverse square law. So if you, if you multiply a distance by 10, you drop 20 dB, right? So imagine your power amplifier. Let's say your amplifier is 100 watts, putting 100 watts into that loudspeaker and you're generating this arbitrarily assigned 100 dB. And you're losing 20 dB in the air. How do you get 20 more dB with that power amplifier? Well, you can take it up to 1,000 watts and you get 3 more dB. You can go from 1,000 watts to 10,000, well, I don't know. If you go from 100 watts to 1,000 watts, you get 10 dB, right? You go from 1,000 watts to 10,000 watts, there's your 20. So you have to go from 100 watts to 10,000 watts to get you that 20 dB back. Not going to happen. Yes, money, but also, like, where are you going to get that power from? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what thing do you plug into a wall <laughs> that will get you that much power? 
<laughs> right? That's a lot. That's a lot of energy you got to find somewhere because you don't you don't get to create energy, right? <laughs> you can convert it, but you can't create it. It has to exist already somewhere. So where is that energy that you can turn into 10,000 watts? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that is. Yeah. Sure. Well, so what you're talking about is don't beat yourself up over the 20 dB, right? Um, it's like, well, you can't, you could look at that and say, wow, I'm losing 20 dB. I'm spending a lot of money and, and I'm losing 20 dB right out of the gate. Well, how can you make that work to your advantage? That's what you're talking about, is if you can make sure that that 20 dB loss actually helps you, in a way that allows all the audience to hear a less dramatic difference, then they're using this problem to your advantage as opposed to your disadvantage. That's all you're talking. That's all you're talking about. Yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, TK Sound? No. Uh, so there's this guy that I like to look into the prison. He's touring with supposedly 150,000 watts of power. What does that even mean? Yeah. You know. Because if you were like, it's almost next to possible to get 10,000. No, it's not impossible. You can get it. It's just like, but you're not going to get it out of Adam, that, you, you know? <laughs> like, you can get it, but okay. it's not going to come out of that connector or that wall, OK? okay. Like yeah, you got to like get a disconnect with a big distro and, you know. Okay, okay. Every time you multiply your distance by 10, you will lose 20 dB. Every single time. OK. So now this gets into sort of well, your question, right? So here is where the rubber meets the road, OK? Uh, so loudspeakers tend to be specified in their sensitivity. And what we mean by sensitivity is how much sound does it create for every watt of power that goes into it? Okay, so we know that watts is actual work. Okay, so that watt moves that loudspeaker a certain amount. Okay, and by moving the loudspeaker a certain amount, how much actual sound gets generated? Um, so they tend to specify it in terms of one watt, one meter, which means you put one watt of power into that loudspeaker and measure it one meter away. You know how much sound do you get? OK? That's just that's, that's how loudspeakers are specified. And we are arbitrarily going to call, somewhat arbitrarily, we will learn how it's not quite so arbitrary in a minute. But whatever that value is that comes out of that loudspeaker, when you measure it one meter away with one watt of power, we are going to arbitrarily call that 113 dB. OK? So if, if that is true, if that loudspeaker generates 113 dB with one watt of power at one meter away, how loud will it be with one watt of power at 30 meters away? Well, this is just inverse square law. Okay, Nothing more complicated. There's a lot of extra information here that you don't need. Okay, The bit you need is Inverse square law, 20 times the log of one distance divided by the other distance. OK, so one meter divided by 30 meters. What's that? Somebody do that math for me. Yeah, minus 29.5 dB. OK, so I'm going to lose 29.5 dB making that trip. I started with 113. So 113 minus 29.5 dB gets me what? 82. I think I got 83. Did I do it wrong? Somebody else do it. 113 minus 29.5? Okay, I did it wrong. 82 point. 
Oh, it is 83. So I was right. 83.5, yeah. So I'll, I will have 83.5 dB left of my 113. OK? Super helpful, right? So in the context of that scenario where it's like, oh, crap, so I lost all that, that level, well, yeah, don't try to get that by getting a bigger panel amplifier. Get it by trying to get a more sensitive loudspeaker. Right? If 83.5 dB left is not enough for you, then try to get a loudspeaker that can generate more than 113 dB with one watt of power. In this case, you only start with one watt, so you could get more watts without trying too hard. But you can get a more sensitive loudspeaker, that'd be even better. This is a pretty sensitive loudspeaker, though. 113, that's pretty good. We have some of those kinds in our shop. So here's an example of an actual loudspeaker, an EEAW JF100E. Its sensitivity is specified at 97 dB, 1 watt, 1 meter. Uh, so here's another sort of real world question. How powerful will your amplifier need to be in order to get 100 dB at 10 meters? This is the hardest kind of question that we're ever going to do in this section about decibels, OK? So, but this is a real world question, right? So you've got, you've got this loudspeaker sitting here. And you need to get, you need to be able to hang it wherever you're hanging it and get 100 dB at the seats, which are 10 meters away from wherever you have to put it. And you need to now buy an amplifier to plug into that thing. How much power does that amplifier need to be able to deliver? That's the question. Because if you buy the wrong amplifier, you won't get your 100 dB. Yes? Um, well, this is sort of a question. If decibels is a relative unit to billion, why do these companies give that, that measurement of the that? Excellent, excellent question. Can I answer it in a few minutes? Sure. OK. <laughs> um, so again, for now, we are assuming that that 97 dB is, a, is an arbitrary value. Okay. It's not arbitrary, but for now, assume that it is. Okay, uh, but whatever that is, I need, I need compared to that to be 100 dB at 10 meters away. Okay, so how might we figure this out? Well, the first thing I would do if I was solving this problem is I would want to find out the dB loss I would get going from one meter to 10 meters. Okay, because that sound that I have to create that I don't get to hear. So if I have to generate 100 dB at 10 meters, how many dB do I have to generate at 1 meter? That's the question I'm trying to find out. Okay. So I would figure that out by saying uh, 20 times the log of 1 divided by 10. We should be able to do this in our head, but I just want to prove that the math works. So run this, 20 times the log of 1 divided by 10 should be negative 20, OK? So I'm going to lose 20 dB in the air. That's, I have to make 20 dB of sound that I'm going to just, it's going to vaporize into the air, OK, before it gets to the seats. But I have to figure out how to make it anyway, even though I never get to hear it, OK? So, um, so if I lose 20 dB, dB making the trip, then I need to be able to make 120 dB at 1 meter, right? If I want to get 100 dB at 10 meters, I have to make 120 dB at 1 meter. Because I'm going to lose 20 of them and make it, you know, in the air. So how do I make 120 dB come out of that loudspeaker? Well, they're giving me a clue. They're saying you can get 97 with only one watt. So now the question is, how many watts will it take to get me to 120? Well, to figure that out, I need to know how many more dB are we talking about here? If one watt gets me 97, and I need to get to 120, how many more dB is that? So 120 minus the 97 I already know how to do gets me 
23 dB. So I have to figure out how to make 23 dB more sound. Okay? So to do that, I would need to know the power ratio of 23 dB. What is the power ratio of 23 dB? What get, you know, what what is that magic number I could use to find out the watts? So that would be 10 to the power of 23 divided by 10. That, that'll give me the power ratio of 23 dB. So what's that? That's what I got. 199.5? Yes? Okay, that's the magic number. So I could take any value of watts, multiply it by 199.5, and I will get a value of watts that is 23 dB higher. Why did you use 10 to the 10 to Because we're talking about power here instead of force. We're talking about watts. Watts is power. Power ratio is 10 to the dB divided by 10, whereas force would be 10 to the dB divided by 20. Okay? So if any, if I can multiply any value of watts by 199.5 and get a value of watts that is 23 dB higher, what should I do with this number? Multiply it by the one watt that gets me the that got me the 97 to begin with. So 199.5 times one equals, coincidentally, 199.5 watts. I could just call that 200 watts. I need to find a 200 watt amplifier. If I could find a 200 watt amplifier, or an amplifier capable of generating 200 watts into that loudspeaker, whatever that impedance is, then I could generate 100 dB at 10 meters, no problem. So, when you're putting, when you put, so you're not using the same thing, but that's the way I'm trying to do it. You're putting two drivers in there because they both have very different capabilities. Did you find the watts? Well, um, that's a, quite a bit more complicated. Yeah, that's a, that's a different universe. But the, I, but I will say, like that JF100 has more than one driver in it, so they've already figured that out, and they're just saying, you know, because ultimately that power gets divided between the drivers, and you've got a circuit that does that. Okay. Uh, Ten minutes, we can do this. So now I can answer your question. So uh, while it is true that decibels are just an, a relative value, right? So you just look at something that says 3 dB, that just means 3 dB more than whatever you had before, okay? If we could somehow agree on what we had before, then that 3 dB could represent an absolute value, couldn't it? So if we could build a consensus to say, we're all going to agree that we started with one Pascal or something, then 3 dB would always be the, represent the same value in Pascals. So, you know, turns out there are professional organizations that do this. Okay, so we, sound people, have professional organizations that create standards like this. So uh, if we, so we as an industry have come to a consensus on what we call reference levels. And there's no, in some cases there's a particular reason why they determined a certain reference level, but that doesn't matter. The point is, if you want to be a professional sound person, you have to agree with this consensus that was already created before you were born, okay? And if you don't agree with it, you don't get to be a sound person. Okay, so you can, you can question where these came from all you want, but in the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You just have to agree with it, or you don't get to do sound. Okay, so uh, that's what we call reference levels. So reference levels, uh, the way you know that you're dealing with a reference level is if there are little letters next to the DB. So if you see DB and then the letters SPL after it, that means decibels, in sound pressure level. 
And what they standardized if the, is they said that 20 micropascals is going to be the reference level for dBSPL, otherwise known as 20 micropascals equals 0 dBSPL. That is the standard. Boom. You have to agree with that or you don't get to do sound. Okay? Now it turns out 20 micropascals corresponds to what we call the threshold of hearing, which is like that's the smallest amount of pressure in the air that you know, most human beings could even recognize as sound. Okay? So that wasn't completely arbitrary. Uh, so if you start from there at 20 micropascals, you call that 0 dB SPL. We've done some science, uh, probably on poor unsuspecting animals, and discovered that uh, however many pascals is 120 dB more than 20, 20 micropascals, that's the amount of sound that starts to hurt. Okay? Yes? relative. Depends on what you're hearing. Depends on who you are. You know, this is it's a moving target. Okay, so gen, you know, I like to be stay on the conservative side of that value because I don't want to hurt people. Um, so I would prefer to stay on the low end. But yes, yeah, some will say 130, some will say 140. I would argue that 140 is the point where it hurts so bad that blood starts coming out of your ear. But um, <laughs> but 120 dB is when it starts actually causing you physical pain. Now, before, you know, well before 120 dB, it will start causing you discomfort. Like, that will not be a comfortable experience for you. But I wouldn't necessarily call it a painful experience. Yeah? Would it also dramatically depend on, you know, like, the audience you're going to record? So if you're, like, you know, at a rock concert, nobody's going to be paying, you know, paying for what went on in the beginning of Sunday morning when you go over 120 dB. Yeah, you know. Those people at that rock concert have already damaged their hearing to the point where it doesn't hurt them anymore because they've just killed their hearing now. And, the, and we're going to talk about that. That's an important thing to know, that once you do that, you don't get it back. There's no way to undo that. Once you've done that kind of damage to your hearing, you, it's gone forever. You don't get it back. There's no, science has not figured out how to get that back yet. Okay, so be super careful about that because once you make that mistake, there's no do-overs. Okay? Um, so that's one particular reference level. DB SPL. That means 0 dB SPL equals 20 micropascals. Um, and it turns out that our sensitivity, so when we say 20 micropascals is the threshold of hearing, that's a little bit of an oversimplification because our sensitivity to pressure is different per frequency. Turns out there's been some science about this. Um, this, I call, like to call this the most widely misunderstood graph in all of sound. Um, it's called the Fletcher Munson Equal Loudness Contours. So there's these two guys, a guy named Fletcher, a guy named Munson. They did some experiments on perception. Okay, they, I don't know how many people they, I, I'd have to go back and read the paper again, but you know how many people they really tested. But they tested a bunch of people, and what they were trying to figure out is, is there a difference between our perception of pressure per frequency. And they found that, yeah, there is. So what this graph is telling us is they, did, they used one kilohertz as their reference point. So if you look here at this top line, we could say that 90 dB SPL at one kilohertz sounded like 90 dB SPL. OK, that was their reference. However, it turns out that in order for the reason that this blue line is not straight is that every, not every frequency sounds like that. So in order for 100 hertz, for example, to sound as loud to most people as 1 kilohertz sounds at 90 dB, that 100 hertz has to be 100 dB SPL. So 100 hertz has to be 10 dB louder in actual pressure in order for most humans to say it sounds the same level as 1 kilohertz. So that means we are less sensitive to low frequencies. 
right? So we have to make a lot more energy for sub-bass than we do for mid-range in order for it to sound the same level. Uh, it goes the other way, too. So it turns out we're really, really sensitive in this sort of 3 to 4K range. So in order for 3K to sound the same as 1K at 90 dB, 3K needs to be down at like 85 dB because we are more sensitive to 3K. So we got to turn 3K down in order for it to sound the same level as 1K at 90 dB. Now, here's where it gets a little dicey, is what they also found is that that sensitivity graph is also a moving target. Okay, So notice that as you go down in actual pressure, the difference in sensitivity gets more dramatic. So whereas we only had to go up by 10 dB at 100 hertz when we started at 90 for 1K, if you go down to 30 dB at 1K, so if you start at 30 dB SPL at 1K, to make 100 hertz sound the same, you've got to be 60 dB. So you've got to be 30 dB more at 100 hertz, OK? So our sensitivity is not flat. That's the first thing you need to know. Sensitivity is not flat per frequency. Each frequency, in actual, even though the actual pressure may be the same, we will perceive them as different. Okay? But the degree to which we perceive them to be different depends on the, how loud they are to begin with. Yeah? So is that, could that potentially be part of the reason on downwind when it is, it sounds like a, like a 3K, so like on the big one where it's like you have to hit the frequency increases up to like 2 dB. Mm -hmm. Sort of, um, but but remember that you, they are when they are doing a 12 dB difference at both frequencies. Okay, so they are compensating for this. Okay, but yes, there is a certain amount of perception involved. So this is this is an average, by the way. These these curves are not universal. These are just the, of the number of people that Fletcher and Munson tested. It averaged out to be this. So some people's sensitivity might change more or less dramatically than others. But yes, in, in, in principle, what you're, you're, you're on the right track. That, but you have to remember this, that your audience does not hear sound flat. Okay? If you actually send out a perfectly flat frequency response to your audience, your audience will not think that sounds flat. Your audience will think it sounds decidedly unflat. Okay? Let me show you what your audience thinks that will sound like. Okay? So at low levels, you know, relatively low, low SPL levels, and we're talking like, you know, I, I, I usually would, would say 70 dB and below, flat sound sounds like the blue line. Okay? So even though you have equal energy at all frequencies, your human beings think it sounds like that blue line. When you go between like 70 to 90 or so, your human beings will think flat sounds like the green line, B. Yeah? That's a totally different thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that on Friday. OK, so when you get past 90 or 100 dB or so, flat sounds like the red line to most people. OK, and we're out of time. So we, we will explore this a little bit further on Friday. But I want you to gestate on that for the week and kind of think, hmm, what does that mean to me? And how might this information be important?
It can. That's that is one strategy. And so when you have that was my question. When you have a kind of DB unit, is that what those two DBA <laughs> Yeah, so we'll talk about that on Friday. Is those A, B, C, that means something in the context of how you measure sound. We'll talk about that on Friday. Okay, I have to stop because the next class is coming in. Yep, so you should be able to answer a few more questions on that now.